Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Land Bodybuilding. Motion. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about when I use rest, pause, reps. Now, rest, pause, reps are a question I've had from people for a long time. A lot of people ask me, Jason, like, what do you think of rest, pause, reps? Do you use them? Sorry, I just paused there because the motorcycle was going by. But yeah, some people were asking me about when do you use rest, pause, reps, and are they the greatest thing since, uh, since sliced bread, all that sort of thing. And the truth is most of my bodybuilding career, the only time I ever really used rest, pause, reps were during times of, uh, let's just say when I was warming up or I just wanted to make sure that my joints were ready for the lift I was going to do. And I wanted to rest at the bottom part of the rep to make sure that the body was acclimated to that range of motion and that all the rotator cuff muscles or stabilizer muscles were firing properly, such as in the bench press. But at the same time, there's something that has been, let's just say, percolating in my mind about different types of tension that you guys may have experienced from some of the techniques. So don't switch off this video, really listen to this because this is going to twist your mind around in, in something that I've just started to look at in a serious way. Now, the one thing about rest, pause, reps is that when you lower the weight, and you keep the tension on the muscles at the bottom, so you're not really resting it. You're actually keeping the muscles tense. You're basically telling the body to be able to perfectly stabilize the weight during the stretch position. But then of course, you contract the muscle, such as in bench press, and you push the weight up. Now, the whole basis of this is to make sure that you have complete control of the weight, which has its advantages, I'm sure. It has its uses. But one thing you have to know is that when you are doing rest, pause, reps, there are different things going on than just a standard repetition, right? If we know that rep speed can affect what muscles are used during a movement, we also can use that logic to say, when you're doing something statically or isometrically, just holding a weight in place, you may be recruiting different muscles than the ones primarily responsible for the full contraction. You follow me? So you're basically working a different part of the system. You're working some other muscles, most likely. Of course, you're getting the muscles that are involved in the contraction, but you're not necessarily hitting the same percentage of those muscles. There are other muscles involved. So such as I noticed when I did slow squats, I noticed that my lower back started to get a lot more work than my quadriceps. And of course, this is also based on my technique and based on how the dynamics play out. But in the end, you're going to notice that a standard movement from point A to point B in rhythmic fashion is going to produce a different type of stimulation than point A to point B and then stay there in point B location, right at the bottom of the rep, and then contract again. So this is really neat because you can play around with your exercises and perhaps a rest pause is better for you to activate a certain muscle group, or maybe it is inferior. Only through experimenting will you know. Now, one of the other times I've used rest pause reps in a successful sort of way is when I'm doing floor presses. So I'm basically bench pressing from the floor. So really there's no muscles involved. Once the elbows are on the floor, there's not really much muscular involvement, right? I don't have to stabilize the bar or keep the bar at that certain height because my elbows are touching the ground. So sometimes I'll rest pause so that way I can basically rest, rejuvenate my energy and then get a few more reps, kind of like forced reps, but in a safe sort of way. So some of you guys who are getting some results from floor presses, one of the reasons why this might be happening is because you are able to rest at the bottom and you're not wasting energy on isometrically keeping the weight at a certain level or controlling it at the bottom. You don't have to control it or use as much control at the bottom, therefore conserving some energy to use on just contracting, right? That's one thing. Now, the next leap of logic I'm going to make here, which is just a theory, because I don't really have a way of testing this out 100%, although I have my observations I've made with other athletes, is that, is there a use for concentric only training. Because what we see in bodybuilding 
and what we see dogmatically pushed all the time is that the lowering of the weight is where most of the muscular damage is created and that's where most muscular results are happening. That's where all the damage is created, that's what, it's, that's what people are saying, that's what the studies are saying apparently, right? But if we look at athletes that are more concentrically contracting based, such as, you know, Tour de France guys, they're just pushing on those pedals on the bike, right? They're not, they're not having to lower the weight, they're not having to fight the resistance as it comes back to them, they're just push, 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 right? Same thing with walking hills, right? You just push, 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 push. Or if you're pushing against a sled, right? You know you felt a burn in the ass and a burn in the quads, but there's never a threat of the sled coming back against you, right? You don't have to lower the weight, you're just concentrically contracting, contracting, contracting. Now, we know from watching a lot of people who rehabilitate knee injuries and other types of injuries that this has a rehabilitative effect. Why, I wonder, right? Does it help short circuit the system so that way the muscle that's contracting is contracting in a more balanced, proper way? Or does it super saturate the area with blood in order to help facilitate healing? I don't know. But one thing I do know is by doing 10 minutes of cardio on a bike, such as with tension, could be enough to alleviate knee pain. That could be enough. Just doing that at the end of your workout every day could be enough to alleviate all knee pain in some cases. Just depends on the person, but it depends on what your situation is. There. See, look, that this is a pathetic hop. See, this is why you need to do more cardio. I know. More squats, it's, it's, more cardio, more uh, leg day. More leg day. Look at that. No wonder you're called Penguin. You have no legs. Uh, <laughs> look at that. I just waddle on, everywhere, Penguin. bro. Come on, man. I thought you've been tuning into my channel for a long time, but you're just like waddling around. No wonder. I just like, waddle this is everywhere, bro. I mean, what can I say? But that is concentric only training, right? You're not lowering the weight. A lot of times when people tear a pec or they tear a muscle, it's when they're lowering the weight and then they have to reverse to the concentric, to the contraction. A lot of times that's when the actual muscle tear happens. So one could argue, maybe we have an imbalance of too much eccentric training, you know, with all the forced reps or the forced negatives, but perhaps there is a time for concentric only training that may help or assist in your training. So that's something that I want to look at in the future and try to devise some sort of experiments to see. Because say you're a bench presser and you're not necessarily getting the chest development that you want and you're doing the standard bench press, lowering the weight, you've tried different ranges of motion, you've tried different rep ranges, all that sort of thing. I wonder if during the lowering the weight, you may be including a lot of rotator cuff and a lot of delt, but if it was just a concentric contraction, if you're just push, and then as it push, like almost like a cardio machine, if you could just continue pushing, I wonder if you would get more chest results in that certain circumstance. It is possible, right? So that's really what I like to do on this channel is to look at things from a different point of view because I believe a lot of people have certain problems and I think in a lot of cases there is a solution, but they've been trained to only look at bodybuilding or lifting weights in a, in a one dimensional sort of way. They're looking at these are the exercises, this is standard, and if my body doesn't respond to these properly, then there's no solution. But what if there is a solution? If you look at swimmers, right? It's a concentric only type of training and they usually have pretty good lat and pretty good chest development. Not too bad for a swimmer, right? And they're a cardio based sport. So one could argue that, hey, they're doing a lot of cardio, so they should be burning off a lot of muscle and stuff, but they still end up getting a decent amount of muscle on the lats and the chest. And this is an example of concentric training. So yeah. I believe that rest pause has a certain element of this in it, but I use rest pause reps more for rehabilitation purposes, as you've seen before, to lower the weight and just hold it so that I include the rotator cuff or the stabilizer muscles in order to rehabilitate the area or to reset the, the Golgi tendon reflex or muscle spindle reflex in the muscle. And therefore I'm able to start to refine my groove. And when I work into heavier weights, then the joints are ready for that. So I think rest pause reps are good for that. Say if you want to pause on the bottom, but you're not necessarily relaxing, you're still holding tension in the muscle. And the other time I use it is sometimes when I'm warming up to make sure that the muscle is prepared for the stretched state. And I want to get an extra little bit of blood supply in there. But yeah, I, I just thought this was worth talking about uh, that. Yeah, there's isometric contractions. There's eccentric contractions and there's concentric contractions, and these are different contractions that can have different uses in your training at certain times. Motrin. Oh yeah, another example, when I punch trolls in the face, it's just purely concentric contraction. Like there's no, 
There's no eccentric, you know what I'm saying? Just like bang, boom, bang, you know? There's no, I mean, there's, there's no eccentric contraction. And it works pretty good. They're, like they fly, like a long ways. Like right off the mountain. It's kind of fun to watch. So yeah, I hope this helps you on your training. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalgalandbodybuilding.com and thanks to the Patreon supporters and take care for now. Mountain.